Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Actually, welcome back to us. It's been almost two years since we shooted our last video. Uh, and after that, a lot of things changed. Uh, I, I moved to a different city. Now I live in Istanbul. I think she's still in this uh, Sisha place, uh, having Puka and writing code. Uh, and now that we decided to come back on creating content on YouTube uh, about Flutter. And uh, it's been like a long time, I think. Uh, a lot of things changed. Uh, would you like to like uh, talk about in the last two years? What have you done? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's nice to be back, Erkan. Thank you very much. And uh, the, I am hoping that this new series, after a long time, will be much better than the previous one, uh, both in terms of uh, video quality, sound quality, because we had uh, many constructive feedback on the low quality of the uh, sound. And as you can see, we have new microphones. So both of us, uh, hopefully it will help. Uh, and please, uh, keep on giving us feedback. Uh, we take them seriously, not only about the quality of the uh, broadcast, but also about the quality of the content. So whatever content that you would like to hear in this new uh, series, write them down on YouTube and we will take them seriously as usual. And I have been working for the past two years in a company, uh, of course, uh, doing Flutter work, and in this past two years, Flutter has improved uh, even more. The uh, ecosystem has improved. The packages we used has improved. Uh, maybe uh, like right after I finish talking, we will uh, show our viewers what we did in the original series. And while trying to modernize that code and using the latest Flutter with it, uh, I saw the packages that we used they had so many major version upgrades so this is something good and they didn't have too many breaking changes as well uh, which shows that a uh, flutter uh, ecosystem is uh, going uh, healthy and stable so that's all from me by the way like uh, when we first started this series two years ago we were but we had no idea about streaming we still have no idea about streaming and i was very uh, nervous when taking those videos uh, because I was uh, like university student uh, sitting at my apartment and trying to create something but I didn't even have like doing presentation experience uh, hopefully as we create more content it will get better and yeah do, do, uh, and do also in the last to... two years yeah yeah sure in the last two years the uh coding changed as well uh like last year we didn't even have ai even if we had it i did wasn't using them and one of my friends recommended me uh using it and he's like right now sitting across the table i'm in a tea shop right now and we are still sitting together and uh after like i was putting some distance to it and i was not open to it but then I started using it, using ChatGPT, uh, and it was like a total game changer for me. And my production speed, the quality of my code improved like, like crazy. Uh, iTunes is still resisting to change. Hopefully, in this after this series, we are going to make him an, an AI user, and he will use. AI in development as well. I, you you so gave I some spoilers. Why? Yeah. Uh, why are you resisting so much in <laughs> using AI? I think I have some trust issues. Uh, it's not because uh, I'm not open-minded. I'm very open-minded, and any like every developer has to be open-minded because technology is the most uh, quickly changed subject, maybe uh, out of all those other subjects. Like if you are a physics student mathematics, whatever, you know, some engineering, they don't change too often, but, you know, coding, it changes constantly. So we have to keep open minds 
about this. I have an open mind, but uh, leaving the you know uh, integrity of my work to a black box seemed kind of hard to do in the beginning. So I was like, uh, I'm giving too much trust into this black box. What if it makes some mistakes? What if I don't review the code very well? And so on, so on. So I resisted for a long time. But after seeing uh, some of the work you done, like which I consider to be maybe uh, weeks of work, which you did in days, and they were working perfectly, uh, the tests were passing, uh, I started trusting this uh, system more. So uh, I will be uh, watching you uh, with an open mind, just like our viewers in the series, and see how AI can help uh, make our lives easier uh, for developers. That's awesome, Brady. So, yeah, hopefully by the end of this video series, we are going to convert iTunes. And uh, the last time we, we did the series about uh, building an application uh, using Flutter Maps and using the user marker, marker on the map, uh, we haven't completed the series, so uh, when we are going back in content creation, uh, we first wanted to uh, finish that series first uh, using AI, using AI tools uh, to see how much coding changed since then. And also on top of that, we are going to add some uh, features uh, using Flutter Maps uh, I think can talk about them right and now I'm wrap up the series. Yeah. Right now yeah. I'm sharing Please my share uh, your screen. simulator uh, to show our viewers what we were left off last time. So it's a basic map app, which is using Flutter Map as the provider uh, of the tiles. And we are, of course, handling permission, uh, both for uh, location permission and location services, which was by default allowed, but it might not always be allowed uh, by the users. And when we allow the permission, of course, we can do it uh, once or all the time. Then it finds us a place in the world. The simulator is right now in uh, California, in Apple headquarters, most probably. And we show our pin, our location pin, in an animated manner. Right now, this app is very simple. Uh, it shows an animated marker just for us. In the future, uh, in, in the rest of the series, by using the help of AI, we will create more pins. And when they come too close in certain zoom levels, because they will look really cluttered, we will get help from a clustering library of Flutter Map, a plugin. And whenever the pins are too close to each other, they will be grouped with different uh, animations and uh, widgets. This is one thing that we will do. And other than that, uh, when your self is not all centered in the map, right now we can center it. But as you can see, it happens instantaneously without any kind of animation. This is not good uh, user experience, so we will fix this as well. And while doing all of these, we will get help from uh, AI and you will be able to see that uh, a 20 uh, episode of series can be put maybe i don't know but maybe into four five six episodes by the help of ai we will see at that i don't know how long will this take either i we just started because i didn't want to pro procrastinate another two years to like get <laughs> back on creating content so uh, let's just start and please share your recommendations in what you want to see in this series. Or it, it doesn't have to be code. It could be like maybe you want to learn about how to prepare a, a job interview in Flutter. Like we are open to ideas in uh, what we create in content. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get started. Uh, like now I will talk about the AI services uh, we potentially can use. So when I first started uh, using AI, I was using ChatGPT 
uh, I don't know if you're showing it, Aytunç, but uh, please show it if you're not. Uh, I was using the uh, it from browser, and you simply say like uh, write a hello world app in Flutter. I just say that, and it just gives you instructions to create it step by step. And you can copy the code here and paste it to your browser. And then I discovered Cloud AI, uh, which is also a different uh, provider uh, for like doing the same thing that ChatGPT does. But for this one, I saw that it has much better coding quality. Uh, after some while, I stopped my ChatGPT subscription and uh, I purchased Cloud AI uh, subscription uh, now that I use it mostly. And then I discovered uh, Cursor AI. Cursor AI is a, a Visual Studio wrapper. And basically, you can use the AI service uh, inside uh, your IDE inside your uh, code editor. Uh, the benefit is that it understands context and you don't have to copy paste code. Uh, it's like a, a, a very big plus because like uh, when you write, uh, like get solutions in Cloud AI or ChatGPT, you always need to go back and forth. You always need to do like some con context switching to uh, complete the code. And then also, whenever you write something, it you always start from scratch because it doesn't remember like what was your last state of your code, uh, what is your coding patterns, how do you structure your project. Uh, you always lose this when you are going back and forth between uh, your browser and your coding editor. But with this uh, cursor AI, uh, you save yourself from this. And it also gives you the ability to uh, switch between cursor AI and uh, open AI. Uh, uh, sorry, Cloud AI and Open AI, uh, so that uh, you can use what infrastructure you use as AI service. So, in I'm not going to go into details of like how it is used in this video, but in the upcoming videos, we will use uh, Cursor AI, and you will see like how useful it is better. Erkan, uh, uh, just yeah. just as a side note. Uh, the uh, I think very recently OpenAI announced uh, a Mac desktop application which can integrate uh, their uh, LLM models with Xcode or VS Code also like similarly to Cursor AI without using a wrapper of an IDE. Is that correct? I They have a desktop app, but it is like, uh, I don't know if it is used for that purpose. I simply haven't used it. so. I don't know. The si simple answer is that. Uh, but anyway, if I were to choose a uh, like service between Cloud AI and ChatGPT, I would definitely go with Cloud AI for writing code. Uh, and using Cursor AI as a uh, IDE is the best way to do this, I think. Uh, another benefit of what AI brings is that uh you can simply create a future documentation uh for like the programs that you develop the benefit that brings is like if you are working on a software development team then you can simply uh use this to generate QA documentation or maybe there are some people in the company that are uh non-technical so you can use this to generate uh, technical do documentation for them. Uh, it's a great tool to document what you did. So you simply say, create a 
uh, QA documentation uh, for this app. So it is now generating this document. So if you are uh, doing any software development work, you should always document what you do. And this is probably what will be expected from you to, to do. So that's also a great plus. I think that's everything. The code generation almost finished. Yeah. So it gives like how to test this, uh, what is the scope, what is the purpose. You can like give further instructions to change this documentation and so on. For that this video, great. I think that's all what I wanted to mention uh, to close this. Uh, do you have any mess messages to share, I think, or do you have anything to mention? No, I can't wait for the next video where we will jump into uh, real coding. And I'm as excited as anyone else at this point. Perfect, then. Uh, just I have a final note, please just subscribe to the channel uh, so that we will be it, it will motivate us to not wait another two years to shoot another video and also share your comments to give us ideas about like what should we create in the next series uh, yeah i'm very excited to start this again and see you in the next video take care bye